Hey, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a little while since I've put out a video of any kind, especially one that I've got a voiceover on, uh, but today's war is one that I felt really obligated to uh, make a full video on, because today we're going up against four Loki themselves. Um, I mean, of course, they're four Loki. This is a pretty daunting war for us, uh, but it was really fun, and we had a great time with it. Uh, today we're going to be bringing in full Kingpin team, uh, just because there were quite a few fights in here that I knew that I could absolutely destroy with this team. Uh, and we're going to be taking 9-9 nine, nine all the way. Uh, and then here at the end of this video, we're going to be going up against a Magneto boss, uh, leaving Hazard, uh, sorry, hazard Shift up. Uh, and you're going to get to see one of the cleanest boss fights I've ever had. So for our first fight today, we've got a Jabari Panther here on path 9. Uh, this is a super straightforward fight and path and everything for Kingpin. I mean, that's why you see Kingpin going up against Path 9 so often. So he can essentially shut down almost anything in the path. Um, the only thing here in this fight in particular is that I do end up taking a bit of damage from the debuffs. Um, just because if you're unaware, Kingpin does have a very short cooldown when it comes to his, uh, debuff shrugging. I believe it's either 0 0.65 seconds or uh, 0.85 seconds, something like that. Either way, it's short, not to the point where it's going to get you killed. Uh, and yes, that is also with the hood synergy and everything. So that's why there's a couple of times in this fight where you see a couple of debuffs sticking. But my damage is absolutely crazy anyways, uh, and I'm not at all worried about these debuffs. And she goes down like it's absolutely nothing, hitting some really big hits. And then this Morning Star is going to be basically the same thing, except this is even better for me. Because Morning Star has the constant um, bleed debuffs off of, you know, her own abilities, it's just going to feed into my overpowers way quicker. And towards the end of this fight, you see that I get up to um, over three overpowers and some debuffs. And I hit for some really big numbers. Um, so at the beginning of this fight, I was going to do a regen boost. And then I decided to just go ahead and go in with the power start one, just because I didn't want to waste it. But I mean, you can see just how quick this fight went down. I Towards the end of that fight, I was hitting 15k lights and 27,000 mediums. Uh, that's a little ridiculous. Uh, going up into the spider ham fight, this was placed by a good friend of mine, Vega. Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with this channel. If you're not, be sure to go check it out. Um, this time I did end up throwing on the region boost just because I wanted to heal myself up a bit uh, because I was going to be taking another fight shortly after. I was trying to just regain some health in order to uh, not have to use as many potions. Uh, there the heavy clipped me, which if you've fought Spider-Ham, you understand the pain of this because <laughs> it happens every once in a while. Here you see me just start blocking so that he is uh, essentially baited into hitting into my block rather than throwing that special. As you know, Spider Ham Special 2 does a lot of damage on block, and I just don't want to have to deal with that chip damage at all. He goes down easy, he plays into me really well, really fun fight overall. Uh, and then we move on to Mixmaster Terax. Now, I haven't gotten to take a Mixmaster Terax in quite a little while, but I knew as soon as I looked over the map that I wanted to take this today. Um, I knew that I was bringing in the full Kingpin team, uh, essentially right after looking at the map, and Terax for Kingpin is one of my favorite matchups. Because of the constant armor breaks that he places on you just for being close, um, you, go, you get so many extra debuffs on you and you're able to go into overpower really quickly. Uh, so here he plays into me really, really well, and so I just keep on intercepting him, go for my special two, and you'll actually see me uh, be able to light attack twice while they're stunned, and then heavy light, or sorry, not heavy, uh, medium light, medium, in order to get a full five hit combo off on him, because I'm trying to, you know, do as much damage as I can, uh, and it felt safe because I knew how long their limber was lasting. Uh, here he throws a special right when I want him to, and you see, you know, my damage is just going crazy right now. There I just went for a heavy because why the hell not? Throw another special two, and he starts blocking. 
throw that special one into his block because I know that I'm unblockable, and then the fight's over. It was so much fun for me. It felt really smooth, really clean, really quick, uh, and it was just a great time overall. So moving on, we're going to be going up against uh, this shared fight in Section 2. It's Wind of Opportunity Stun, Blood on the Water, Defective Defense. It's the old Encroaching Stun node um, in Section 2 for Path 7 through 9. Uh, and we've got a Sorcerer Supreme here. So, I knew that Kingpin would work for this because defective defense, the disorients count as debuffs. If they were passives, then I wouldn't have used them. Um, but the AI here is really passive with me uh, up until a short time into this fight where I can't actually really get any openings with her. Uh, like, you see that she's hidden in my block a little bit, which is great. That's what I want. Uh, however, I'm not actually able to hit into her too much. Uh, so luckily she threw her special two pretty much right away. And then here in a second, I actually parry because I know that I'm going to be able to shrug it off. Uh, and I was just doing that to try to get an extra debuff on me, but it actually made the AI become much more aggressive. And then I was able to get my special two off and then absolutely just wreck her here in the end. Our next fight of the day is gonna be this uh, America Chavez over on Path 9 in Section 2. Uh, this is another one of Vegas Defenders. He actually did showcase this fight on his own channel. Uh, he had asked me to send him any vids that I had uh, taking down his defenders because he just wanted to watch them, I guess. Um, but yeah, he uh, you may have already seen this one if you do watch his channel, but America Chavez here is a good placement because if you aren't able to bring a decent counter then she's going to start gaining her you know power really quickly she's going to get all of her phases and if you have to deal with her special two just good luck i mean that special two is really irritating to try to avoid especially for me i always get clipped by at least part of it uh so he is running high md which is fine however the fight's over <laughs> um the power lock synergy from Sinister really came into play there because I was able to stop her from gaining any additional power from the special ones and MD was essentially turned off for me. Uh, next up, we've got a Nick Fury fight. At this point, I've had to reboost, so I'm not using the same six hour boost anymore. But to me, this is essentially a uh, just normal Nick Fury fight. I mean, honestly, it's in my favor as well because I'm getting so many extra debuffs and I am getting that extra damage. Uh, but my goal is to only let him throw his special two so that I don't have to deal with the unblockable uh, special one or, you know, just getting clipped by it in general. Here he's power locked. I have him in the corner. I go for heavy and lo and behold, he's got stand your ground. Oh well. I mean, Took a few hits, but it ended up giving me a couple of extra bleed debuffs, and I end up healing back all of the damage I ended up taking anyways. Uh, here, while I'm unstoppable, I actually let him hit into my block some more so that I don't have to deal with that special one again or risk him going unblockable. And as soon as he throws that second special two, I end up just nuking him down for the rest of his health. Uh, I think these fights are a really good showcase of just why I always tell people how Kingpin is absolutely at the top of the skill class. Uh, I'm not necessarily saying that he is number one because that's very subjective. Things are always gonna be different for everybody. Uh, however, to me personally, he is absolutely a top of the top option. Um, so moving on, we've, we're into boss island now. We've got this Vision Arcus fight on Conflictor and Prowess Puncture. Um, I had a plan going into this fight and you'll see me attempt to execute it and then just say screw it and start doing not the same thing. Um, I thought that because I had the Sinister Synergy that if I played it correctly, I would still be able to get the power locks off on him. And then I remembered the fact that Arcus also has another tenacity on his base. So there's a couple of times here where you'll see that I parry and then he throws a special, and then he ends up shrugging off that uh, that power lock anyways. Um, yeah. Long story short, he ends up gaining a ton of power and ends up going to his special three in just a second, uh, which isn't 
really what I had in mind uh, when I started doing this fight. Normally, Arcus is really straightforward with Kingpin, uh, just because he places so many debuffs and you're able to, you know, gain a ton by dashing back and forth. Um, this is my bad. I didn't really think it through, but didn't end up doing too much damage. It was half my health pool, but I have skill power back boosts and I'm able to cycle my special twos here and comp or take full control back over this fight. Um, just like that. I mean, three special twos in a row are probably enough to kill Arcus. And, um, you know, it was just a simple mistake. I didn't really think about the interaction that Arcus's own tenacity would have. It's, it's a smart placement because, as you saw, he ended up gaining just a ton of power really quickly. Um, carrying over, we've got an Eye Hulk here on uh, Aspect of Evolution. Um, I this this was a really straightforward fight for me because I'm so used to using Kingpin uh, periodically in map 8 uh, AQ and there's an Eye Hulk shared fight that I end up taking so I know how to shut down his region at the end. Um, I say that as if it's a secret, it's just affected by ability accuracy reduction and I am running uh, level 3 assassin and then paired with my special one degen which places another 65% ability accuracy reduction you know we're sitting at minus 95% um, and he is not able to uh, end up regening my thought process behind this placement is that if you don't bring somebody that can shut down the region and he ends up being able to gain a bunch of gamma if he then you know heals up back to basically full then you're dealing with a second health pool as he's already uh ramped up with all of the aspect of evolution uh but for kingpin it's just it's easy to be honest um i wasn't concerned about it at all and we're able to take it down without him even healing on to our last fight of the day we have my favorite matchup of this war which was a magneto boss uh, that i will be taking down with the hazard shift node up now, Kingpin is really good against Magneto, even though there's class disadvantage. Now, I, I know what you're thinking, like, oh, well, I mean, what is he really doing that does anything for you? You're just dealing all this damage because of Hazard Shift. And yes, I am doing massively increased, increased damage because there's Hazard Shift on this node. However, why Kingpin is so good for it is because you have access to a very long unstoppable on your special two. The reason that's so important is because it means that you don't have to worry about Magneto's own unstoppable on his heavy. You're not trying to, you know, bait into his block and get a ton of openings. I can just make my own openings by being aggressive with that unstoppable and just going to town on him. So... You see that the Sinister Synergy is really coming into play here as I'm able to stay on top of him for pretty much every single time that he throws that special one. Uh, and over time, as I've taken this fight more and more, I've learned the spacing on that special one evades that I'm able to punish it pretty much every time. I mean, just look at how much damage I'm dealing with my basic hits and my special twos. Um, and I've barely lost any health. I actually... <laughs> I get him in the corner here, and I do the classic kingpin belly bumps uh, for some really big damage. Uh, normally, if y'all see on my channel, I don't really heavy with kingpin very often, uh, but I just wanted to go for something that was fun and flashy. And I actually ended up completing that fight with 100% yellow bar, even after taking all of that, you know, the damage from the um, from the debuffs and everything. Uh, but it, it's a super fun fight for me. It's one that I'm really comfortable with, like I said, and um, I do recommend that you try it on your own in case you see a Magneto pretty much anywhere. Like, if, if you want to test it in questing or something, I do recommend it because Kingpin is a good option for him, and it's really fun. So uh, we did end up losing this war. Um, it's always fun getting to match against Four Loki. We've gone up against him a few times, and we've gone back and forth on the wins and losses. Um, they just played really well today. We had a couple of things that we could have improved on, uh, but we will absolutely be sure to uh, come back full force next time that we end up matching against them. 
So uh, congrats to Four Loki. It was a great matching up against y'all. And uh, shout out to all my friends over there, uh, Vega especially. Um, be sure to go check out their channels if you don't already know them. I'm sure you do because they're all, you know, the big YouTubers. How could you not know them? Uh, if you enjoyed this vid, please let me know. Uh, leave a comment. Subscribe. Tell me how you're feeling. I don't know. But regardless, have a great day and enjoy.